there's been stories popping up all over the Yellowhammer State about people that are saying, look, we're ready to reopen, we're going to go ahead and do it, and, and people actually defying Governor Ivey's new Safer at Home orders. One such person is Annette Harris, who is the owner of the Rumors Deli in Coleman, Alabama, yesterday, and, and they're a lunch place. Deli, you could kind of guess that. They're a lunch place, and they opened up the doors from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's it. But they did open up their doors. They did allow people to come in and dine, and they served about 30 people yesterday. So not exactly a, you know, a gangbuster crowd. You didn't have people just hovering on top of one another as they're eating. 30 people in a four-hour period, that's not a lot of people. Believe me, I, I've worked in the restaurant business, and, and so having 30 people in the middle of a lunch rush, I don't ever remember having so few people in the middle of a lunch rush in any of the restaurants that I've worked in unless there was some kind of... Uh, I mean, even spring break in Auburn, when I was working at Auburn Moe's or during the summer in Auburn, wasn't that bad. So 30 people is basically nothing. But Annette Harris said the other day, We are hurting. I just hope that people will understand why I'm doing this. These are our businesses. They don't belong to the government. Amen, sister. One of my biggest gripes on this whole thing, that... I'm somebody that believes in staying at home. I'm somebody that thinks that it was actually a good idea to pull everything back, but I thought it should all be done on a person-to-person -person basis. Leave it up to the citizens. Let them decide. Your average business owner doesn't want to hurt people. They don't want to hurt their clients. They don't want to hurt their employees. They don't want to get hurt themselves. And so they will make judgments and decisions based upon that. And the government has absolutely no business saying to a person, you who own this business are not allowed to bring in other people that want to make purchases from your business. That's not the government's job. And what she said there at the tail end of her quote that, I mean, just rings so true, my business does not belong to the government. It doesn't. How do you define po private property? It is the thing with which you can deny access to others. Well, the government is effectively, now granted they're accessing it by saying you can't use it, but the government has effectively taken over all of our private property if they're telling us that we're not allowed to use it. By doing so, the government has inserted itself into the relationship between a business owner and their customer, but also between a property owner and their property. That's the thing that people seem to gloss over. And this ridiculous notion that business owners that are opening this up, they just don't care about people, they hate people, and they want them to die, and they're not taking this seriously, she actually speaks to that in this interview, and this is a quote from her as well. I do care. I'm a good person, and that is why I say, if you don't feel this is right for you, don't get out. Stay home. Now think about that. This is a person that runs a business that depends on people coming to their business and spending money on them. That is what she relies on for her livelihood. And she just told people, if you don't feel right about it, if you don't think it's safe, stay home. That's a person that cares about freedom. That's a person that is saying, look, even if it hurts my bottom line, I'm not telling people to come out and engage in risky behavior. This is obviously not somebody that puts profit ahead of people. This is obviously not somebody that took this lightly. She actually said that she held out as long as she could, but she's getting to the point to where she's going to lose her business, she's going to lose her livelihood if she doesn't do this, if she doesn't start turning some revenue. And the idea that all these people are just a bunch of malcontent rebels that are doing this just because they want money more than they want to, to save people or to protect people, that's just insane. And another thing that you'll notice on here too, because she actually said these are the precautions that she took within her business for the people that did come out and wanted to eat with her. And this is via AL.com. She and her staff are taking precautions like sanitizing common surface areas, limiting the number of guests to less than half capacity, placing tables at least six feet apart, 
removing condiments and menus from tables, and moving drink machines into the kitchen. Somebody that doesn't care or doesn't take this seriously doesn't do all those things. Because those are the kinds of things that customers are going to complain about. Like, you don't have mustard or ketchup right there at your at your your table, I mean, that's an inconvenience for you. You can't go and refill your own drink. That's an inconvenience for you. But that's a precaution that makes sense because they're trying to stop the spread of this virus. The idea that these people are apathetic or morons or don't care, there's just no truth to it. She also said that she was not requiring employees to come in if they didn't want to. And there were 10 employees at her restaurant that decided that it wasn't worth the risk, that they were just going to stay home. And that's fine. Again, it should be left up to the individuals. Because another lie that people have been trying to peddle about this is that, well, uh, all these people are heartless and they're saying that, you know, you're going to lose your job if you don't come in. Look, there might be a handful of employees out there that would take that attitude, but this person in particular certainly isn't. And the average business is just simply not going to do that. This is a talking point that Rashida Tlaib was parroting that we saw a clip of on the Daily Dose of Stupid a couple days ago that uh, these employers are basically saying, you have a choice, either lose your job or die. Well, that's not happening. Business owners aren't saying that. They would be within their right to do so if that were the case. I mean, any employee that when you say, hey, we're open, and they say, no, I'm not coming in, that, that's your right to fire them if you want to. But the average American citizen understands this is a unique situation and they're being as accommodating as possible, like this small business owner is. The latest, which really chaps my hide, is that the authorities were actually threatening to chain and lock her front door and shut her down and remove her permit. In other words, she just wouldn't be able to operate even when this thing opens up. That smacks of tyranny. That's taking away a person's business, their livelihood, their property, because they refuse to comply with your orders? I mean, we don't have time to talk about this today, but that's very, very similar to what was going on in Texas, where the judge was basically saying, you have desecrated the law, you've desecrated these orders, and you need to apologize and admit that you're wrong. I mean, it's very similar to what was happening in 1948, or sorry, 1984, that book by George Orwell, where he's like, no, we have to turn all of the heretics into true believers. We have to change their mind to where they all love Big Brother. This is just absurd. This is basically saying, bow the knee and kiss the ring, or you will be cast out. I don't even recognize my country anymore looking at this. I mean, I'm just absolutely dumbfounded. If the government can tell you that you're no longer allowed to use your business to make money, is there really anything more that they can do? Is there anything worse that they can do to you? Is there anything that is more an indicator of them taking away your freedom than taking your business away from you because you refuse to, even if you're doing so peaceably and not breaking the law? Uh, I just don't understand how this is the country we're living in anymore. What have we become? What are we turning into when we start tolerating this? That the second there's some kind of event, and I'm not saying that it's an insignificant event, that government has the power to just strip everything away from you, including your own private property, the, a business that's been around for decades that you've worked in and built up yourself. If they can do that, what can't they take away from you? <laughs> My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.